I knew this guy. Um, all the all the juice heads in my local area, we all knew each other, and all the dealers knew each other. We were all friends, right? Uh, um, all the other steroid dealers in the area, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh, so I knew one of them, and I knew that he made his own stuff, and he knew how to do it, and he had educated himself really well. Like he's one of the few people that knew as much about steroids as, as I did, and I had never tried to make it myself. I knew he was, and I knew a lot of people said his his stuff that he made was good and he was able to charge lower prices because it's so much cheaper to make it yourself right so i decided right then and there that that i had to form a partnership with this guy so so i could have another way to offer something else besides just this british dragon stuff from this chinese store so one night i just i went to him i had this whole thing planned out i intentionally got a lot of my western union money and i brought it with me and i went out you know to go drinking that night and we were going to meet him and I said, hey, I got something to talk to you about. And and uh, he was just like, okay, let's go talk now. And so I, I just brought him in my car and I, I unloaded everything we were doing. And I showed him all this money that we were making. I had like, I don't know, $15,000 that I picked up that day or something. Or not that day, that week. Um, and, and I remember like his mouth just dropped open. He was just absolutely just dumbfounded by everything I had just told him. And I said, I said, well, well let's partner. Let's, uh, yeah. what, like, I'll, uh, like you were start manufacturing. I, I, yeah, you like I'll give you all the money to do to. We'll get all these powders. You can just make this, but you got to just make it on a much bigger scale. I need, yeah. you know, I need like uh, I need a thousand bottles a week or what or whatever, and just and just start making. It. You know what do you say? Are you in? And he's just like he didn't say anything the whole time. His mouth is just open. He can't believe what he's just heard, but also the opportunity is in front of him because the amount of money he was going to be able to make was pretty serious. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was just like, okay, let's do it, and. uh from there, I, I named my, um, my brand name was Matrix. Um, I, we created a label. I had another one of my guys create a label. He made, uh, you know, he, he got all the powders because he had, uh, he already knew where to get powders from. He had, um, he had a good powder source. So he ended up um, getting the powders, making these vials. I slapped my Matrix label on it and then uh, um, I put it up on, on the list of my products and mm-hmm. and you know there we were going and so you can still look up to this day matrix lab steroids and you'll see all the reviews a bunch of really quality reviews we intentionally made it strong so that it would the quality would be good mm-hmm. and little did i know that would just drive a ton more business in um just the quality the strength of these right. of our products so it started getting legitimized people started trusting it people started yeah. using it and then uh Eventually, was that all that you were selling was the Matrix stuff? Yeah. So this is the interesting part. So I, again, the Zeitgeist at the time was we don't trust anything that's not name brand, right? Nobody wanted to do that. So mm-hmm. I thought that when I entered my Matrix brand, so at this time, you now the whole the whole black market is run by UGL, right? Underground Lab. UGL stands for Underground Lab, which is just people making their own stuff and selling it. Now the whole there is no name brand anymore. It's all Underground Lab stuff. Mm-hmm. But at this time, it was the opposite the UGL or underground labs just started Mm -hmm. and there was only a couple in existence. And I was one of the, one of the, I was, I wasn't the first, I was in the beginning of the whole UGL movement. That's also what helped spark this empire. So, um, I thought it was going to take a long time for people to warm up to this new stuff. Now this new stuff I had, I was making my profit margin. I bought 25 milliliter vials for $50 And sold them for 125. My profit margin was about uh, uh, 250 percent, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah, 250 percent, right? So <clears throat> uh, when I uh, the stuff I made, I could make for significantly cheaper, and then I, and then I just charged 100. I made 20 milliliter, milliliter vials for 100 dollars. So my profit margin came up. It was a 400 percent profit margin. So not only was it cheaper to make, but my profit margin, you know, shot up. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, so, I mean, the economics just worked out wonderfully. So again, I thought that, um, I thought that it would take a while to warm up to this new brand that nobody knew this brand, right? But it turns out that I was the brand, that people, I had set um, enough of a, a trust in people that, that they trusted me 
they trusted everything that I did and anything I put up there that they would go ahead and accept. Anabolic steroid users are some of the, 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 um, they have a lot of animus towards people they don't know. They, they're some of the, the they'll berate you. They, um, they're some of the hardest trusting people in the planet, but once they do, they're also some of the most loyal. Mm. So once I got these guys loyalty, once I had all these Patriots, that was my client base, they would, they would trust anything I put up there. And I'm telling you, if it wasn't almost instant, everybody just switched right from the BD stuff to this matrix stuff. And then, and then the matrix stuff, um, people started posting about it. And right. so this stuff is absolutely fire. Cause we made it strong on purpose. Right. Right. And that drove in tons more people because now they're like, oh, I got to try this Matrix stuff, you know, because everybody's talking about it. Mm -hmm. Now it was all over the internet, all the forums. This everything. was nationwide. This was not yes. no longer just local. Yes, that's correct. And, and in fact, you tried to keep it from being low. You didn't yes. want it to be local at all. That's correct. But yeah. these people knew your name on on online. My they, business name. It, your business, not you yeah, personally. Not, yeah, nobody knew my So they, they knew Matrix. Matrix and, and the name of our business was BD Supplements. I BD know, Supplements, I, right. I named it that because it was British Dragon Supplements. That's oh. what I was originally selling. Oh, okay. So gotcha. my business name was BD Supplements. That's what oh, you saw okay. on, on Eroids. They didn't know your face, though. No, nobody knew my name or my right. face. But, uh, but then the Matrix was the brand name of what I sold. So everybody knew kind of both of them. But okay. more people started knowing the brand because it was, it was so potent. And how long did this last before you realized that you were on the DEA's radar? I didn't, I didn't totally, I didn't totally know I was on the DA's radar. And I, oh, you never there, knew? Until they kicked in the door? now. <laughs> yeah, it makes <laughs> sense now, but I didn't, I didn't think I was. Uh, now I can, after I got indicted and saw the information I have, I can piece it all the way back. And mm. It's pretty evident. Oh, I mean, it's okay. obvious. In hindsight, you can see it. Yeah, it's obvious what happened now. But, you know, at the time I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know. Did you sell to an informant or something or? Yeah, but I, I did because that was what was in the, in the paperwork, but it didn't, it doesn't matter. It was all anonymous. So all they can say is I ordered from this site and I got steroids that tested re, uh, legitimately, but they can't put a name or a face or anything to that. So that, I mean, that almost didn't matter. Hmm. It was, you know, there was a lot of elements that ended up getting us caught, which I, I could, I could go into, I probably, I could go into at the time when it's, Time in the story when it's more relevant, if you want. Yeah. Where are we? Where are we in the story now? You started producing your own stuff. You're selling your profit margins up to four hundred percent. Yeah. And you're just making. You're raking in tons of money. Yeah. Yeah. So and what what sort of problems are you encountering because of all this fucking money? Yeah. That's right. So yeah. So the the first problem that became there was there was a whole bunch of just expansion problems, scale problems. Yeah. Right? So and one of them was that. We were making we were making too much too much money. Um, it's a stupid fucking problem to have, but it was a problem. Um, so I couldn't collect all this. So I had to start uh, I had to start finding other anonymous ways to collect money. And um, and I started so I started using those. You ever heard of those green dot cards where you can essentially like you have this reloadable credit card and they sell these little reload packs with a with a number on it, right? And if you get that that number somebody pays the cashier you know the whatever that costs two three five hundred dollars and then you send that number i can load that onto this card and it's it's completely anonymous and and i have this card it's um it's like a reloadable credit card with a with a code that you can buy okay right? and so if somebody from across the country can just buy one of these in their local cvs or whatever and then and then send me that code and i can load that money onto my card okay um but that you can only load so much money onto these cards, right? Um, so I had to have, like, I had to get freaking 30 of them. And I just, again, I started paying people, get me one of these cards and give it to me and I'll give you a hundred bucks or something. And then I had, so I had, I had like 30 of these and I had like, I had an army of people collecting money in, in Western Union and this way. And it was still just getting bogged down because like only 20,000 per, per person for Western Union. These mm -hmm. things can only hold so much money. Um, uh, just too much money was coming in like you know at this point at this point probably we were probably doing like a 1.2 million a year and uh and it just kept getting bigger from that